the number one song, ladies and gentlemen, the Staple Singer. <laughs> That's Mavis Staples and the Staples Singers on American Bandstand in 1976. Mavis has been singing since the 1940s. She was nominated for her first Grammy in 1961, has won two in her career. The Staples Singers were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1999. The Kennedy Center honored Mavis this month for her contribution to American culture. For the little girl with the big voice from the south side of Chicago, it's been an unforgettable journey. By the time the staple singers reached the top of the pop charts in the early 1970s, Mavis Staples had already been singing for nearly 25 years. This is your first publicity photo? That's Purvis, Pops, Cleedy, and Mavis. A very young Mavis. A very young Mavis. <laughs> Mavis was just eight when her father, Pops, put together the family band. And he called us children into the living room, sit us on the floor in a circle. He said, we're going to sing. Mavis, with her deep contralto, would take the lead. Billed as God's greatest hit makers, the Staples would become stars of the gospel, certainly. When did you realize you had something special? You know, I realized it before we made a record. Mm -hmm. We would sing in church, and they come up to the, the pulpit. They come up, and they'd be crying, and they wanted to shake my hand. Mm -hmm. And sing and put money in my hand. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when I said, I knew I had something. <laughs> something was happening. Something was going on. The Staples singers, based in Chicago, traveled without a rhythm section, just pops on guitar. Elvis Presley told me, and then he says, I like the way your father's guitar sound. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you. He said, <laughs> <laughs> he said yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a nervous guitar. He plays a nervous guitar. Another king admired the group's music. In the early 1960s, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. invited the staple singers to travel with him. We're the people that will not stop until they have full freedom and human dignity. Their music would become the soundtrack to his civil rights crusade. I walked beside Dr. King and I sang songs for him. You know, that makes me proud. In 1964, the Staples were invited to the Newport Folk Festival, which introduced them to a broader audience. One more time for the Staples singers. But things really changed in the late 60s. When their new label, Stax Records, put a rhythm section behind them. And in 1972, I'll Take You There took them to number one. How did it feel when you suddenly broke mainstream? You know, it felt good. It, 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 we were finally being heard. Mavis's distinctive voice continues to attract all-star collaborators. Wilco's Jeff Tweedy produced a Grammy-winning album for her. Before that, Prince wrote two albums for her. And before that, another songwriter had an even stronger attraction to Mavis. the Mavis that Bob Dylan fell for? Anthony, <laughs> why do you want to do that? See, you made me sigh. <laughs> now, Dylan fell for this Mavis. That Mavis. Yeah. Folk songs and more folk songs. It was 1962. They met on a television show. Bob Dylan, the staple singers. 
Dylan would propose. Mavis would decline. Did you ever explain to him why you turned him down? I told him. We were too young. But this past summer, Dylan invited Mavis to open for him on tour. I said, I'm so glad to see you. I've been wanting to see you, Bobby. I've been wanting to see you for so long. If you'd marry me, you would have seen me every day. <laughs> I said, oh, don't do me like that. Singer-songwriter Mavis Staples. Mavis Staples' remarkable nearly seven-decade career was honored this month at the Kennedy Center. With her music, she serves God with all her soul and yet is herself a goddess of soul. For Mavis, the only thing missing was her father. What do you think Pops would make of, of you winning the Kennedy Center honor? I tell you, he'd have that twinkle in his eye. Mavis, Mavis, girl, they, they honoring you. I was last in... Pop Staples died in 2000. That was the hardest time in my life. For the one true vine. You and Pops were together singing for 15 years. Yeah, over 50 years. Wow. And he would tell me, man, you don't have to sing loud. You don't need no gimmicks. Sing from your heart. What comes from the heart reaches the heart. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, Daddy. And uh, I go in that dressing room. I say my little prayer. I go to my heart. And start singing. That's the best advice he could ever have given me. Sing from your heart. Mm -hmm. Works every time. It works every time. At 77, Mavis still tours regularly, and she can still raise the roof and bring down the house. You can get a ticket. Go, because she's oh, a man. Oh, bravo, Anthony. I, know. I tell you, half the fun of the Kennedy Center Honors was watching her. Talk about yes. what's going on. Yeah. She was so in the moment and so loving every single thing that was happening. She was so time. honored to be there. Yeah, and, you, you know, feel that. it meant so much to her, you know, after all this time. And Bob Dylan and Mavis Staples. I don't know. <laughs> Have you heard that, Nora? Well, oh, I, I saw those pictures of the young Mavis. She, I mean, she'll tell you. Like, she was they were hot. like a couple, couple? Yeah. He was, wow. Bob for, went to Pops and said, I want to marry Mavis. Wow. And Pop said, you got to talk to Mavis. Wow. And Mavis said no. Yeah, that is one of the best things about the Kennedy Center honors. Yes. Not only is it, it yeah. recognizes a lifetime achievement, but the yeah. interviews that we get to do yes. and learn. And learn. Yeah. This, I mean, in her relationship with her father, think about that, spending half a century alongside your dad. From yeah. your heart. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting because she's honored at, by, by Bonnie Raitt uh, at the Kennedy Center, who also had a really close relationship with her dad. And Bonnie said that's one reason, you know, Mavis oh, yeah. and I bonded was, you know, it's uh, with that relationship with their fathers. I liked her before, now I like her even more. Yeah. She's so sparkly. Yeah, she's a major. Oh, wow. All right, tomorrow we'll hear from Kennedy.